I'll be using 3DS Max 2012, but no matter which version you're using, you can follow along. Just go to freesdk.crydev.net so that you can see the plugin that you need for your version of Max. And those plugins are located in your CryEngine 3 folder, in the Tools folder. Find the plugin that you need and just copy and paste or drag that into your 3DS Max folder under Plugins, not Plug Dash Ins, just Plugins, and place your plugin right there. Next, go into the Crymax Tools folder and double click Copy to Max. Indicate the drive letter that you have Max installed into, and once that's done, you're done with setting Max up. Now we can go into Max and make sure that we set everything up properly. If you did everything right, then the CryEngine settings should pop up and the light should be green. And your CryEngine 3 exporter is located under the Utilities tab, Picture of a Hammer. Go to More and you'll find it here in this list if you want to make a shortcut to it and then just click this configure button sets add a total button and add that button to your utilities some important things to work efficiently are to set up our units properly so go to customize unit setup and make sure that your units are set to metric meters hit OK and under the snaps toggle right click that button and go to home grid and make sure that your grid spacing is every 0.1 meter and that your major lines are every tenth space and this perspective can be set to anything you like it just indicates how big that your grid is so now every one unit will be equivalent to approximately 0.1 meters in CryEngine 3 and that means that 10 units would be equal to 1 meter so if you wanted a 3 foot by 3 foot cube you would just want to make a 10 by 10 box and finally before we start modeling I like to make sure that these three buttons are checked snaps toggle angle snaps toggle and percent snaps toggle that means that no matter what tool we're working in it's gonna snap to the grid and it keeps all our lines nice and clean to start we're gonna create an object so make sure you're in your create tab the first tab and click box and just click anywhere on your grid and hold and drag your mouse to define how big the box is and then when you let go you can define how tall it is now to move you can hold alt and middle mouse button to rotate let go of alt and use your middle mouse button to pan and just use your mouse wheel to zoom and another way to move is to hold click shift W to toggle this tool and this tool has a lot of different movement options it seems clumsy at first but once you get used to it you'll find it very useful now to manipulate objects you want to have your four fingers on Q W E and R and those are for these tools Q is select W is move E is rotate and R is to scale if you hit W we can move this object along any axis and if you hit E we can rotate along any axis and if we hit R we can scale it uniformly or along any axis and anytime you want to get back to just select mode hit Q that's gonna come in handy also you want to get used to using your 2D wireframe views in order to move objects along axes more accurately you can middle click and pan or middle scroll wheel to zoom and if you ever accidentally rotate to take it out of that view you can just click here to take it back to the appropriate view okay now let's modify our box hit Q to make sure that you have the box selected and if you ever hit Q too many times you can find rectangle mode again here if you accidentally leave it and let's go to the modify tab next to the create tab and here you can set the parameters for your box we're gonna make it one meter by one meter by one meter and here you could set segments to your box which basically divides it into multiple segments and that makes it easier to modify later but for now this cube will do fine once you're ready to modify your object even further you can right click on the object and turn it into an editable poly and now we can actually edit the individual vertices the edges the polygons of the object and you can use the one two three four and five keys on your keyboard to switch between these different modes so we'll hit the four key in order to get into polygon select mode and that way you can select the individual faces and you can use W E and R to move rotate or scale them individually and some of the tools that you're going to use most often are going to be the extrude tool, the bevel tool, the inset, and my favorite is the quick slice tool. So let's say that we wanted to, let's hit Q to get out of any uh, transform modes that we might have open, and quick slice. And I like to use the 2D wireframe modes in order to be more accurate. So we can see the front, here is the front polygon we have selected, and we just click once to start our cut and click again to finish your cut and it doesn't have to be all the way it's going to cut along that axis so if you wanted to do um, an angle cut that'll cut crossways and this is basically going to split our polygon so if we get out of quick slice tool which you can also do by hitting Q then we can hit 4 to go to the polygon select mode and you can see now that we have two different polygons to edit here 
Now let's go ahead and do that quick slice four times or three more times and along each edge. Just select quick slice and click once and twice to perform your cut. And you can see now we have four cuts. So if we hit Q to leave quick slice and four to go to polygon select, we can select the inner portion, this new polygon that we've created in the middle. And now those other tools I was talking about, extrude, bevel, and inset are probably the most popular tools that you're going to use and try each one to see what they do. If you click the settings tab next to them, then you can have some options to play with before you actually perform that um, modifier and hit the check or the X to cancel or apply your modifier and we will have a modeling tutorial so you can figure out how to mirror so that you don't have to do it to every face you can just do it once and it'll copy itself and we'll learn a lot of other things but for now we're going to start texturing this cube so that we can bring it into the game now I already found my texture so it's a 512 by 512 JPEG image of a crate we use the Crytiff exporter to save our image we set the exporter up in our first tutorial save it as a Crytiff plugin and we're going to want to use diffuse high Q as our setting okay so let's take that cradle1.tiff and bring it into our CryEngine 3 folder in the game folder under objects let's make a new folder for the object we're making crate01 and we'll bring that tiff cry tiff in there and we want the editor open so that will generate a DDS for us otherwise it's not going to so I'll delete it open the editor and we'll try again okay let's try that again bring crate 01 into your objects crate 01 folder and that'll auto generate a DDS for you now back in 3ds max let's click the checker circle in order to get to the material editor and you can pick any one of these materials and hit the red X to clear clear it off and you want to make sure that you name it here to the same name as your model crate 01 and this is where you define the type we're making a multi sub object because that way you can have multiple materials built into one and discard the old material and we're always going to name our materials for good practice and we're going to have two materials on this object one is going to be the wooden crate material and one is or whatever material and one is going to be a proxy material which needs to be named proxy and that's going to be the collision mesh so that you can't just run through your object like it's not there okay so this is a multi sub object material that we made and these are going to be standard materials which are children of this multi sub object and we for the material type is going to be standard and the shader basic parameter is going to be Crytek shader so just like you do in the cry engine we set the maps the diffuse color to the image we want to use and bitmap is going to allow you to select an image so navigate into your CryEngine 3 game objects create one and select the Crytiff not the DDS which you made and now we're going to make sure that we have named this first one crate one yeah it's the same name as the multi sub object and to get back to the top here's your hierarchy this is actually what we want named crate one you can see this material is going to change as you switch between your child object which is this standard material and back up to your parent material which has the standard child objects and the proxy is also going to be a standard material Crytek shader and this one's going to be different because it doesn't actually need a material map or image on it it's going to be a physicalized physical proxy no draw so you're not going to see it now it's important to have these little buttons checked the show shaded material and viewport that's going to when you apply a material make sure that it shows up in the viewport and we'll go back to create one select this material and do the same thing and then go back to the parent the top and now we're going to apply this multi sub object material to our object so make sure you have Q and select everything and it's actually best to select the polygons so go into polygon select mode because you can apply different materials to different polygons once you select everything we're going to drag everything out and apply it on there you can see that goes on because we did select the show shaded material in viewport